Hey guys, welcome back to another Hartman Controls Protector.net tutorial. Today we'll be showing you how to do the initial Protector.net software installation. Protector.net needs to be installed on a Windows 7 or newer machine. It can be a shared machine for small systems with just a couple doors, but for anything larger we always recommend a dedicated PC. We'll start by plugging in your flash drive with Protector.net installer on it and running Protector.net.exe as an administrator. Protector.net requires the .NET Framework and Microsoft SQL Express 2012. The installer will automatically install them if they are not already present. If you install Protector.net from the official flash drive, those components will be loaded from there. If you are installing from a web download, the installer will automatically try to download any required components. We'll start by clicking the Install button and waiting for any of the prerequisites to install. Once SQL or any other prerequisites are installed, we finally get to our installer. We'll start by clicking Next, accepting the license agreement, Next again. In most situations, a typical is going to work just fine, but in our case we're going to click Advanced to show you some of the options. The screen here lets us define where the database is located. In most cases it's going to be on the same machine, but optionally we can use an external SQL server. We'll click Next. This screen here is where we can configure which ports we want Protector.net to run on. We may also provide user accounts for the services Protector.net uses. This is important when installing Protector.net in a domain environment, as setting up these domain service accounts is recommended. We will by default create a Windows service account for you and manage the passwords dynamically. The installer gives us the option to automatically forward the required parts through Windows Firewall. It's important to note that if you have an external firewall, you will manually have to unblock the ports. If you're using a third-party firewall on the server Protector.net is installed on, you may need to unblock the three ports our application uses. Those ports are UDP, TCP 9876, TCP 11001, and TCP 11002. Finally, you can choose an installation path for Protector.net and begin the installation. It will then copy the required files, create, and run the services. If you encounter an error while starting the services, it's likely the account that the installer ran on does not have privileges to access the database. In this case, we suggest contacting our support team. We can help you further. The various controllers that talk to Protector.net can communicate in two ways, either directly to each other by knowing the IP address of the server, or by using DNS to resolve the name of the PC Protector.net is installed on into an IP address. Wherever possible, we strongly recommend creating a DHCP reservation or having a static IP for the Protector.net server. The installation is complete, and that concludes this tutorial. Please see our next video tutorial on accessing the software via a web browser.